Hello and welcome. St. Patrick's Day is fast approaching, and here in the U.S., we typically celebrate by wearing lots of green, watching parades, drinking Irish beer, and of course, eating corned beef. So why not celebrate this unique tradition cruelty-free? Grab your kilt and let's get cooking! For this recipe, I'm using eight cups of bread flour in one bowl to make the meaty portion, and two in another for the fatty bit. I'm starting by adding about two and a half cups of water mixed with red food coloring, but I've got another cup reserved and I'll keep adding a little as I go. I'm looking to be able to knead this into a uniform ball, but I don't want to overhydrate it. For the two cups of flour, I start with two thirds of a cup of water, and just like before, add a little bit more as I mix. If you haven't washed flour before, check out my flour washing tutorial, which you can find on Satan Society's YouTube channel and at satansociety.com. I washed both of these dough balls to the cloudy, hazy water stage, and I'm letting them drain for about 20 minutes. You can really see the difference between the white starchy bits and the red colored gluten in this one. I left just a little more starch in the white dough for a slightly fattier texture, but if you leave too much, this can turn into a corned beef flavored dumpling, so make sure you wash enough out. Now that they've had time to drain, these dough balls are ready for seasoning. Starting with the small, fat dough ball, add in a half teaspoon each of salt, onion powder, and garlic powder, and an eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper. You can see it's all broken apart now, but let it rest and it will come back together. On to my meat dough. Here I've mixed two teaspoons of vegan Worcestershire sauce and pickle juice, plus one teaspoon of Marmite. Next, add one tablespoon of mushroom powder. For this, I ground up dried porcini mushrooms, but ground shiitake also work well. One tablespoon of beetroot powder to make it nice and red. One and a half teaspoons of salt. One teaspoon each of packed brown sugar, ground mustard, and smoked paprika. Half a teaspoon each of black pepper and coriander. And an eighth of a teaspoon each of allspice and ground ginger. With all these added ingredients, the dough ball is going to need a little time for the gluten to redevelop. I'm going to let it sit while I prepare my simmering broth, which will also act like a brine for this. I'll be using my instant pot on the slow cooker function for this, but most slow cookers should do the job well. If cooking on the stove, make sure you barely get to a simmer. Too hot and you can wind up with spongy results. I've inserted a cheesecloth to help me easily strain the broth later, but you can use a fine mesh sieve instead. I'm adding a couple carrots, no need to peel, two small onions, and one large celery stick, all roughly chopped. One teaspoon each yellow mustard seeds and black peppercorns. Count out 15 juniper berries, 10 cloves, and 8 allspice berries. I've crushed a few cardamom pods, but if you don't have those, you could use about an eighth of a teaspoon of the powder, two crushed bay leaves, and one broken up cinnamon stick. And finally, another tablespoon of salt. I'm covering this with two quarts of water and getting it cooking so all the flavors have a chance to start coming together while my dough continues to rest for about an hour or two. Now that your dough is rested, you should be able to knot it. I just tie this in one knot for some grain variation and tuck the extra under. Then stretch out your white dough over the red as thinly as possible. I'm even pressing down a little because corned beef is usually a bit flat. Let it sit just another 10 minutes like this to give them a chance to stick together and place it in the hot broth to cook for about an hour and a half. When it's done cooking, let it come to room temperature. Then keeping it in the broth, pop it in the fridge overnight or for several hours. Now that your seitan has had a good rest in the fridge, it's ready to be finished. Take it out of the broth and let it come to room temperature. This is a good time to prepare your veggies. Preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. For the glaze, mix together two tablespoons of whole grain mustard and one tablespoon each of vegan Worcestershire, maple syrup, and olive oil. Put the corned beef in a roasting pan, add more salt and pepper to taste, and cover. Once the oven has come to temperature, cook to heat through for 45 minutes, basting in 15 minute increments with the glaze. Leave the roast uncovered in the oven for the final 15 minutes. While that's cooking, transfer your strained seitan broth to a large pot. Add another two quarts of water, one teaspoon of salt or more to taste, about a half teaspoon of pepper, two bay leaves, and a tablespoon of olive oil. Bring your broth up to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer. Add the potatoes, carrots, and onions and give them about a five to 10 minute head start before adding in the cabbage. 
Then cook for another 10 to 15 minutes until the potatoes are fork tender and the cabbage is soft enough to eat. When your corned beef is heated through, it's ready to be sliced and served with a heaping side of veggies. Happy St. Patrick's Day!